Good afternoon. I'm here today with Celeste Vale from St. John, New Brunswick. How's it going, Celeste? I'm so good. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. So I'm really happy to have you on. And I thought first, if you can just tell the audience a little bit more about yourself. Sure. So I am a naturopathic doctor. I'm based out of St. John, New Brunswick, and I work for the company called Townhouse Solutions. So I go to St. Stephen. I'm mo again, mostly out of St. John, but I also go to Hampton too. So kind of go all over the place. <laughs> Wonderful. And so you're based here in New Brunswick. This is great. Yes. So, you know, as part of our seven days of healthy habits challenge, I've been bringing some guests on board just so that you could share what you do. Cause I know that you are, you're a naturopath, you're an athlete. Mm -hmm. So if you could just begin by telling us, um, some of your top three tips. Sure. So of course there's so many, but the top three that I tell most of my own patients is number one, we love resistance training. The reason being is not only just for feeling good and overall health, but your bone density. So especially when women are going through perimenopause or menopause, I always get them to do some sort of, it even can be body weight at first. It doesn't need to be in the gym, lifting 200 pounds. Like we don't need to be doing that, but even starting with body weight squats and that kind of resistance training is going to help a lot with your bone health and just overall muscle mass and everything, which is going to really help you when you go through your menopause journey for sure. Oh, thanks for sharing that one. It is so important, right? And we often, women think that they need to uh, bulk up or something like this, but yeah. it's really, it's for bones, but then the whole mitochondrial benefit. And, you know, I've been talking about that so much lately with my patients right. and people don't understand mitochondria, but I say these little batteries that live in your cells and you need to shake them up. You need to move to right. activate them to get mm -hmm. more energy, right? Right. That's right. You got to shake those at powerhouses of the cell right up. <laughs> we love them. And the movement too. And the body squats are so easy. You know, we, we talk now about the studies that have done on exercise snacks, right? Yes. So, right. Get up once an hour or just go on the back of your chair, hold on the back and then do yep. some squats. Yes. I mean, and that's going to help you even long-term, right? Like when you're, you know, older and you're trying to bend down to get things, if you've already established that muscle memory, it's going to be so much easier to move around when you're older. Yeah. And this is why too, the muscle memory as people that train when they're younger, it's such a great thing for them because when they get back into some type of program, then they just, it's like right away, they start to feel better. Exactly. So much better. So much easier. Right? <laughs> Instead of starting later, it's better. Just, but just start wherever you are is really what's best at the same time. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So number two. Yes. So getting outside, that could be my preferred would obviously be nature, but even just getting outside when you're, we really want the sun to be on your face, right? Don't put a bunch of sunscreen on with the sun glasses. Cause that's going to block vitamin D absorption as well. If you're outside for 10 minutes, you're not going to get a burn. It's all right. But that's really what going to help with that vitamin D production, but also just getting that little boost of energy. So let's say like, you know, like your 2 p.m. 2 p.m. slump that most people go through. If you just go outside and let that sun just hit your face, you're going to be more awake after a few minutes, right? Like it just, and the fresh air too, it makes such a big difference, really. Yeah. It's so important, like it impacting our circadian balance, you know, our melatonin, um, whatever time of day that we can get out, but the morning and mid afternoon, Perfect. Especially with our Canadian winters, because I don't know about you, but with the time change this weekend. Gosh. Disaster. <laughs> what a disaster. So really needing that additional source of uh, of light to get out. A hundred percent. And especially if you can get out, you know, in the woods and get out in nature like that, that's going to even benefit you even more, right? Right. Then we get to do that little bit of... Um, Forest therapy, forest bathing, right? A little bit of grounding. Yeah. Ground. So good. <laughs> we love it. So what would be your number three tip? So number three is a classic, everyone's favorite protein. We all love that, right? So most of us are not getting enough protein. And then when patients come in, they'll be like, well, I get my protein bar and it'll be some brand from Costco that has like 30 ingredients, right? So that's not, that's like ultra processed food at that point. It's not the type of protein that I'm talking about. I mean, yes, if we want to supplement with something like a really clean protein powder, that's completely fine. But I, I really try to get people to stay away from those protein bars just because there's so many additives to it. And then you're just getting a bunch of junk. So again, getting good quality meat, or if you're vegetarian or vegan, getting good quality tofu and that kind of thing, not like the fake meat chicken nuggets, but like the good <laughs> non-processed things, right? And again, everybody's going to be different depending on your weight and depending on if you're training as well and all of that. But 
even at the beginning, just trying to get an extra 25 grams a day is going to be your best friend. You're going to feel so much better. And if I had to pick one time, it'd be in the morning. So we can do first thing in the morning when you're eating breakfast, if we can get 25 grams of protein in, you're going to feel so much better because what's going to do, it's going to carry your blood glucose a little bit longer than if you had just toast and peanut butter, right? Peanut butter is also not the source of protein, which everybody always thinks it is. I'm like, it's fat. Like it's not your source of protein. So, fast. so true. So again, we, I haven't mm -hmm. spoken much about protein this week. So for you, what would be some of your typical breakfast? Because that's what people mm -hmm. says they, they're like, I don't have any ideas. What can I have for breakfast? Right. So what I tell most people, just because it's the easiest, it would be either a smoothie or like eggs you've whipped up the night before, like hard boiled eggs or something like that. But a lot of times it's a smoothie that you just make quickly in the morning. And then you just put your scoop in there. You put some, you know, vegetables like spinach and you put blueberries and that kind of thing in there. And then bam, there's 25 to 30 grams of protein right there. Right. Greek yogurt's also a really good one. Unsweetened, not the super high sugar stuff. Cottage cheese, like a whole bunch of stuff. It really depends on your time. I also do a lot of overnight oats. You can add protein to as well. Right. That kind of thing. Anything that's grab and go is usually what people want. And it's yeah. so great to begin with that morning meal. Like yeah. this is so fundamental. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of controversy, you know, when we hear about intermittent fasting and yeah. time restricted eating, right. but, you know, I share that for me, I was doing, I was skipping breakfast for a number of years. Cause I was right. on for a while. I did ketogenic nutrition. It really helped me with my food cravings, yeah. but then I noticed things were really not optimal in terms of my digestion. And yeah. then I went back to eating breakfast again. And it's like, everything moves more about better in the yes. morning sure does. <laughs> when you have some food. And so I think a lot of women, especially because they're going through perimenopause, that's a lot of what we see. Right. And then the cortisol is all over the place. Yeah. And then if they go and they restrict too much with intermittent fasting, yes. maybe they're only having two meals a day it's mm -hmm. hard to get your protein in that amount. And also it can raise their cortisol levels. And I find a lot of people too will end up having a coffee first thing in the morning with on an empty stomach, which is another one that's going to raise your cortisol as well as your blood sugar, which people don't realize because it's even with black coffee, right? So it's craziness. Like that's not what we want <laughs> to have something in your stomach. guys. <laughs> And then protein too, like as we get older, you know, even for me, like, you know, I'm relatively fit, but mm -hmm. it was two years after my menopause, I really started seeing my muscle mass go down. Right. And it's, it's wonderful to see the work of like Stacey Sims, for example, you know, she's written so much about the topic that mm -hmm. especially post-menopause, yeah. you really need that protein source. Yeah. And it's one of the biggest problems that I see with women it's this inadequate amount of protein. And then they're wondering, why are my muscles flabby? Why don't I have any energy? Right. So the role of, you know, decreasing estrogen and the way our, our body is breaking down our muscle, but just essential amino acids. Like I had this conversation yesterday about fatigue and I said, well, protein is an essential amino acid. You yeah. have to eat it, right? Yeah. It's kind of one of those things, but people, again, it's just, it's, it's not quick and easy for a lot of people in their minds. That's, and I think that's a big issue. They want to just grab something from Tim's or whatever in the morning. Like, that's not what we want guys. <laughs> right. So again, coming back to that, someone this week had spoken about planning and preparation. And I think that's a huge part of it with, with what you discussed, you know, with the fitness, but also with the foods and always yeah. having that, those kind of go-to things. Um, what's your favorite go-to Celeste? Like, is there stuff that you take in the car that you always have with you? So what I, you mean, what I do for breakfast or what I do for the protein scenario? Yeah. Like if you're on the road or there yeah. are there some takeaways like that you always I have. have so for, I for have got that little ninja bullet guy from Costco. And I literally first thing, cause I have two screaming children while I'm doing this. So, and I, I do my whole smoothie. I put my scoop of protein in there and then I just blend it and go. And it literally takes me two minutes. You know what I mean? I only put spinach, blueberries, a little bit of water, and then I have the protein, like the scoop of protein. Sometimes I'll put Greek yogurt in it. It just depends, but super easy and quick, right? I'm not sitting there trying to, th or in a banana, but I'm not sitting there trying to think about it. I'm just, I have to go, 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 which I know a lot of people are in the same position. So I think that everybody should be given one of those little ninja things. <laughs> so good. They're, they're always on sale at Costco. <laughs> they're like 50 bucks. 
Go get them. <laughs> They're amazing. Like my sister made all her baby food, just sometimes using the little thing. Right? Oh, yeah. it works so well. And the one that I, the one that I have at Costco too, you just scoop it right off and put the bottom on. So you don't have to pour it into another cup that makes it even quicker. <laughs> yeah. And for anybody, like for seniors too, it's so much better just to do that than buy than buying Ensure and Glucerna and all those. Well, that's the thing. Thanks. Absolutely. Because what you're looking for, with if you're looking for a good protein powder too, right, is you don't want a bunch of additives in it. Like you're not looking for, you know, sucralose, aspartame. You're looking for one that only has like four or five ingredients, right? And you really want to get whey protein isolate, not concentrate. It's less processed as well. And so the ones that are sweetened with stevia are typically the ones to go for. They're usually only a few ingredients. So, and then you don't have to worry about all the other additives too. Yeah. That's a really good tip because there's a lot of artificial stuff there, but stevia oh is a plant. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's not aspartame. <laughs> it's much better. <laughs> well, this has been great, Celeste. So we have uh, getting a uh, weight bearing exercise. We've got getting outside. And then of course we've kind of gone in depth into protein. So um, this is wonderful. Now, how would people reach out to you if they wanted to, um, Kind of where can they follow follow you? So I do find if you just go on my Instagram page or my Facebook page, it says Dr. Celeste Vale, right? So if you just go on there and if people have questions, they can feel free to message me directly on there too. I have no issues with that. And that's the same name on Facebook too. Okay, perfect. And check her out because she's got a great uh, uh, Instagram page. She's always posted. <laughs> I try to make funny videos. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for having me on, Tiffany. You're very welcome. Have a great afternoon. Bye. You too, bye. Take care.